It can outrun a 747. It speeds close to 400 kilometers per hour and accelerate from zero to 100 in three seconds. <laughs> it's a rush. If you haven't driven a really fast car, I can't imagine the power. And everyone said it couldn't be done. It's a challenge big enough for a lifetime, more or less. The brainchild of a 22-year-old with no background in the automotive industry, driven by a single motivation. A lifelong ambition to make the greatest supercar in the world. It takes shape as the Koenigsegg Agira. And it's literally one of a kind. Each car is custom built to its owner's desires. I thought I could make something different. Enter the mega factory, where automotive dreams become performance car reality. It's breathtaking, obscenely fast. It's the supermodel of the sports car world. It's the Koenigsegg Agira. A beauty that rules the road. The stealth brainchild of business maverick and four-wheel genius, Christian von Koenigsegg. Sneaking in under the radar of automotive giants to make it to the top of its class. The Agera has been named Hypercar of the Year. It's the culmination of a lifetime's passion. I had a dream since I was a very young boy to build my own cars. And I remember when I was about five years old, I went to the, the movies with my father and saw a, a Norwegian stop-motion movie about a bicycle repairman who built his own sports car on a mountaintop. And it was really, really well made and very inspiring. The movie's name was Pinchcliffe Grand Prix in English. And I remember walking out of, uh, of the movies and saying to myself, that's what I want to do when I grow up. It's not only his car that impresses. Christian von Koenigsegg turned this ambition into action at the age of 22. And what's even more amazing, he did it with no engineering experience, no manufacturing background, and limited funding. But he had no plans to apprentice with the performance car legends. He vowed to design, build, and produce a car of his own. Well, I thought I could make something different. I didn't have any heritage controlling what my next step would be, but I could kind of start with an open book and just dream up a car that I thought would be perfect. And he did it in record speed. Creating this supercar masterpiece took Christian von Koenigsegg less than 20 years. An impossible undertaking overcome by an individual with more drive than his cars. I'm doing it is because it's difficult, because it is a challenge, because it's not easy, and, and, and it's a challenge big enough for a lifetime, more or less. So, um, and I like that. And challenge has proven to be Christian von Koenigsegg's constant companion. He's battled adversity, faced show-stopping hurdles, and overcome tragedy, all in pursuit of this dream. And he creates these dream machines in the most unlikely of mega factories. Koenigsegg is based on a disused Air Force base in the small Swedish town of Engelholm. Enter the factory, and you get the feeling that something's missing. There are none of these. Robots. Instead, you're greeted by a very different sound. 
the sound of silence. Because these cars are not mass-produced, they're individually handcrafted by a team of 22 experts, taking up to 12 months to complete. From the state-of-the-art carbon body to the supercharged engines. It's an unlikely way to turn a tidy profit, but at Koenigsegg, this unconventional business model works. Because these are not ordinary supercars. They're individually commissioned works of automotive art with a million euro price tag. This product is not just a car, it's, uh, it's filled with uh, love and passion. And um, even our customers share this, this um, sensation that we are part of, of, of this together, we are a team. Haldora von Koenigsegg has worked at the company for 11 years, but she's been part of the dream from the very beginning. Since uh, I am married to Christian and I've been with him for 20 years and I've seen his passion for this and how he wanted to, to create this car. And it's great to share that dream with him and, and to realize this. And, and uh, in the beginning, it was his dream, but now it has, has become so much more. And we are a small family, we have two children and, and we all live with this as our life. The Agera is built across seven stations. And like most things in this factory, they do it differently. Each step brings its own technological hurdles. When we're talking about cars costing over one million euro or one and a half million US dollars, it's a small market. And the, the labor intensive process makes us adaptable and we don't have to change huge production lines or machines just because we change model. Uh, so it kind of goes hand in hand with the low volume process. It could be a prop from a Batman movie, but in 18 weeks, this becomes this. Christian's early designs changed little over the years. His original concept was simple. A car that is organically beautiful, but practical. And above all, a car that performs. And only the very best materials will do. In 1994, he took this philosophy from paper to production. It was time for a prototype, but that requires money and a team. With no credentials, banks were not an option. The solution was as unconventional as his business ambitions. He used the internet and found suppliers and engineers willing to throw in their products and expertise for little or no cost. Within two years, Christian had built the CC. I remember having a very big smile on my face. <laughs> And, 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 and aroused with emotions and, and almost kind of a pinch myself sensation that so much hard work for so long time and, and suddenly I could sit in there and drive it. And I, and I do remember that day very clearly. It was a quite warm summer's day and I was uh, driving in a, in a, in a fairly secluded uh, foresty area on, on a quite open road. And uh, I remember um, using some of the car's potential quite early on. <laughs> His future was sealed, with just one small concession to supercar tradition, his choice of name. The, the Königsegg name uh, is a very, very old uh, uh, name from Germany. Uh, it's from the 11th century. In the beginning, people said, how can you put that complicated name on the car? But I said to myself, Lamborghini is not that easy. When the car gets known for what it is, people will learn. It happened to be my name, and, and it's kind of a tradition within the car industry to use your name when you create a car. And every step of this journey compounded the already overwhelming technological and financial challenges of building a high-performance supercar with a small team and limited resources. But this rocky road brought Christian to the Agera. 
Back at the factory, the first step in creating this supercar is putting it together. These body panels are constructed entirely from carbon fiber, reinforced with Kevlar and aluminium. Performance criteria set by Christian at the outset. Carbon fiber is super strong, yet incredibly light. Less weight, more speed. Just one of these panels costs close to 20,000 euros. That's more than a family-sized runaround. But the Koenigsegg isn't driven by cost. It's powered on perfection. And this is about as close to perfect as it gets. Zero to 100 in three seconds, with a top speed of over 390 kilometers per hour. And the looks to match its performance personality. Benny Olsen runs Koenigsegg's body and paint shops. This is the first station we have on Koenigsegg. Here's the car is coming in and we take it up on uh, the jig. We are looking on uh, all um, the gaps, so it's flush. This is station two of the seven. Station one is in England, where the body panels are made. Each panel begins its life exactly to Christian's design. But Koenigsegg lets customers add their own twists. If there's something special on the specification, we do it here with wheel holes for that. If they want to have a rear wing, something like this, we do it here. Matching these parts takes around 10 days. We are aligning the body before we're going to paint and everything like that. That's the main part, and we do all the drillings, all the rework that has to be done. Par Magnus Mareist, known here as PM, has built Koenigseggs for four years, yet he's never built the same car twice. Well, every car is unique, so they're just hands-on on every car. You have to look at every corner, every radius. And experience counts. For the first time builder who doesn't have experience to align the body it will take up to maybe two or three weeks just to align the body because there are some small what we can traps. After all the painstaking work putting this body together, the next job, taking it apart again. Most cars are painted at the end of their construction. A Koenigsegg. It happens at the start. Mikhail Jungdahl is a master body worker. We prepare the car. We um, sand down the filler and make the surface even so we can paint it. And we fix all the shapes. There are no machines to check tolerances. Perfecting these curves takes craftsmanship. We block it by hand. I feel it by my hand. <laughs> I did it for 32 years now. So, uh, sensitive hands. It takes about a week to complete a piece of this size. Only when it's flawless will paint be applied. Eventually, a final layer of protective varnish completes the job. While stations two and three perfect the exterior, the team at station four start on the guts of the machine. This is how it looks when it arrives to us in production. And on this car, in this station, we put on the whole engine and rear end SC, as a complete SC, and we put it on the rear end of the car. And the front end is built besides here and puts on the car as a complete unit. This frame is called the monocoque. Like the body panels, it's 100% carbon fiber composite, and it's virtually indestructible. 
This is the uh, carbon monocoque frame. This is basically the structure of the vehicle. Um, this manages all of the structural stiffness and all the crash criteria and all of the tolerance control and dimensional control of the vehicle. It's the safety cage, taking the stress and weight of the car's components. Yet it weighs only 72 kilos. It may never be seen from the outside, but it still gets the same attention to detail as the exterior body panels. Our customers liked the idea that the cars are hand-built, that we really paid attention to every detail on every car and visualized the uh, inspection of everything. And Koenigsegg's customers are as unique as its cars. Only a lucky few can spare the cash needed to own one of these. But for those who can, it's like buying a Picasso. And ironically, these perfect driving machines are so prized, they're rarely driven. The Agera's serene sleekness contrasts starkly with its power personality. This beauty hides a beast within. And it's this man's job to put it there. I build every engine for the Koenigsegg cars. So I'm the only one. <laughs> Agera is a Swedish verb meaning to act. And true to name, these five liter turbocharged V8s deliver a massive 940 brake horsepower with 1,100 newton meters of torque at 6,000 RPM. In other words, it's fast. It accelerates like a rocket and just keeps getting faster. <laughs> it's a rush. <laughs> if you haven't uh, driven a really fast car, I can't imagine the power. The Agera has a mid-engine design, so the weight of the engine is more evenly distributed along the length of the car, giving a better center of gravity and faster cornering. Great for a race track, but not so good for high-speed driving. The problem, it makes the car steering light at full throttle. The solution, fine-tune the aerodynamics. And the Aguirre's aerodynamics handle more than road performance. This car is faster at top speed than a 747 on takeoff. Something has to keep it on the ground. The Aguirre has a very effective wing on the rear of the hood. This combined with the front splitter and rear diffuser creates a balanced downforce forcing the car onto the road, preventing it from literally taking off. Add this to its 100 mm maximum ground clearance, and you have exceptional road handling qualities. And the faster you go, the better it gets. You jump into the car and sit, you notice quite quickly that you're very central in the car, very low. Uh, close to the ground, and of course, that's to make the car handle perfect. The first day we showed our pre-production car at the Paris Motor Show, I think it was the year 2000, uh, we got a call from Germany saying, I want to buy one of those cars. So it was pretty interesting. We were in France, but got the call from, from Germany. Koenigsegg was on the map, but this success created an immediate dilemma Gearing up for full production meant finding more money. The challenges you face in the first stages of a project like this is, uh, is money. Uh, how to finance uh, such a product with no income. Until we started selling cars, we had to live on venture capital and um, finding investors that were, were interested in, in uh, sharing this dream with us and wanted to see this become reality and believed in us. Christian succeeded in raising capital. He was unstoppable. And the motor giants who had dismissed this man as a crazy enthusiast woke up and started paying attention. When I get the chance to think back about how this is possible, that this is actually 
amazing what we're doing. And amazing gets better with every model. Back in the engine room, Patrick adds the last touches to his beast. Here we have the engine block. It's a Felix's own cast engine block. They are cast in uh, England. They are made uh, especially for Kenny's sake. And we get them here, and I start assembly. It takes about two weeks to finish each engine. When you fire up the engine, of course, the cabin fills with engine sound. <laughs> you have this kind of bass going inside the car that the engine is awake. On the surface, this 5-litre supercharged V8 may look like a regular motor, but it's far from ordinary. These powerhouses generate more horsepower per cylinder volume using less fuel than any other engine in production. The secret to this performance lies in something called the brake mean effective pressure, or BMEP. In a combustion engine, Fuel and air is injected into cylinders and ignited, creating explosions that push the pistons down, which rotates the crankshaft and ultimately powers the drivetrain. The BMEP is the average pressure imposed on the pistons consistently from the top to the bottom of each stroke. An average supercar has a BMEP of 17 bar, the Agera has 28, and higher pressure equals greater performance efficiency. Back at station four. Axles are made. These shafts are turned by the engine and they in turn rotate the wheels. Bernie Johansson has been working in this building for almost 40 years. He's one of the original aircraft mechanics when the site was still an operational airbase. Finding experienced craftsmen is a challenge for any manufacturer. But to build a Koenigsegg, you need a very different skill set. The physical work is not hard to train people. But it's important that we find the right team members to join our team. Uh, Koenigsegg is all about making dreams come true. Every aspect of the Agera is designed to work in perfect harmony. What strikes most people is that it, it feels very together and solid because as the engine and gearbox and all the heavy bits in the car are actually part of the chassis construction and not mounted on rubber pieces making them move around, the car moves as one piece. It's like it's carved out of a piece of, of metal or something. It, 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 it's no looseness about it. It's, so it gives a sense of control very, very quickly to the driver. And, and that's part of the enjoyment, of course, given the amount of power that's available. This fusion of design and technology makes this the lightest fully homologated series produced hypercar in production today. There's no question that this car moves. But one of the team's biggest challenges is how to stop it. The solution, aerospace technologies. When you hit the brakes, you get a sensation of immediate stopping power and endless stopping power. This ceramic brake discs technology is adapted from aircraft braking systems. These brakes take the car from 300 kilometers per hour to zero in just over seven seconds. It's hot work. So each brake system has its own air conditioning. Purpose-built air cooling ducts keep the brake discs at optimum temperature. Next up, station five. The arteries and life support. Uh, this just arrived to station five, so now we have about uh, two, two and a half weeks. We're doing a lot of small parts in this station. It comes with the engine and gearbox in, 
in the front is attached and uh, we do a lot of electrics wiring and uh, start up the electrics, testing it, start up the engine. Every meter of the Agera's wiring is hand connected. Some of it operates these state-of-the-art interior console lights, called ghost lights. Yet another design challenge. This dilemma tore at the very heart of the Koenigsegg philosophy that only the very best will do. We had a challenge of how to get the illumination and the pictograms on the centre console um, illuminated without adding plastic. And plastic is definitely not an option. So the Koenigsegg team developed a unique solution. They cut nano holes in the aluminium dials. Too small for the eye to see until the lights come on. That was a huge challenge for a small company to develop this technology. Um, just because we were stubborn and didn't want to add plastic. This company has taken giant strides in its short existence, but it almost didn't get this far. By 2003, cars were selling, the business expanded, and Koenigsegg made waves in the industry. Then, tragedy struck. I just saw Krishna saying, no, this cannot be possible. As unconventional as its backstory is this mega factory's location. Situated on a disused military airfield, complete with a runway, ideal as a test track, and equally perfect when their elite customers want to drop in. But this choice of address was the result of an unexpected tragedy that almost turned the Koenigsegg dream into a nightmare. In 2003, production was in full swing and Christian was looking to the future. Everything was going well until Christian received an unexpected phone call. There was a fire at the factory. It was uh, in 2003 and um, we got a call from um, the fire brigade. I just saw Christian saying, no, this cannot be possible. Just, will you not be able to take uh, out the fire? Believed to have started in a kitchen, the fire soon raged out of control. With 25 minutes between them and the factory, Christian and Haldora feared the worst. But fate and the Koenigsegg team stepped in. When we arrived, we could see two cars standing outside the factory, yeah, not, not burnt, not damaged at all. And we also saw parts uh, lying all over the place. We could see some familiar faces, some of our personnel were there, black in their faces, trying to salvage parts from the warehouse. Nine years of work reduced to ashes. But the staff's quick thinking meant Koenigsegg still had a fighting chance at survival. The fire forced the company to move, but it didn't stop the CC-8S getting to Geneva. And it added an extra twist to the business mix. The new location meant building a new production line. As with every car manufacturer, new models are key to continued success. So the CC-8S was retired. And the CCR took over. Driving Christian to further improve on his already groundbreaking technologies. First car was the CC-8S. Then we did the CCR, which was uh, kind of a, a, an evolution of the CC-8S, where we upgraded a lot of things like uh, brakes, wheels, suspension, engine. So we went up to 806 horsepower. Breaking the rules for road car performance is not only a passion for this company's founder, it's a crucial business move. To compete with the more established brands, Koenigsegg has to beat them at their own game. It's a little bit like the fight between David and Goliath. We, you know, we are small and we need to compete with the big ones. We need to um, be better with less resources. We need to be very clever. 
no one doubts his brilliance. But Christian's next move hit like an earthquake under the sleeping supercar giants. In 2005, the CCR became the Guinness world record holder for the world's fastest production car. With a top speed of 388 kilometers per hour, breaking the record set seven years previous by the McLaren F1. We had been trying for a whole weekend to set the record, but due to weather conditions and technical challenges, we did not succeed during that weekend. Then we had a new slot on the Monday, on the lunch break between 12 and 1. and we set that record. At a circular track, which was a big challenge, not being able to drive straight, scrubbing away a lot of speed. But that was a huge achievement. Against impossible odds, Christian had set the bar for the heritage brands to be. Companies that thought Koenigsegg would never catch on were now playing catch up. But before they had a chance, Christian raises the bar even further. Modern standards have changed the way customers choose cars. Environmental awareness and green credentials are often at the top of the list. Supercars are not known for being environmentally friendly. Gas-guzzling, emission-blasting beer moths that rip through the fabric of the environment. Not a Koenigsegg. The Agira R has a flex fuel system, allowing it to run on both regular petrol and a reusable energy source called biofuel, giving Koenigsegg yet another opportunity to show the big boys how it should be done. We made an evolution in, in 2008, which, which was called a CCXR, which was the first environmentally conscious supercar in the world, as it is a flex fuel car being able to also run on biofuel. It took a new production record with 1,018 horsepower. These are among the most environmentally friendly supercars in the world. And incredibly, this green fuel enhances the car's already impressive performance. And, and the nice thing about it is that CO2 emissions drop drastically as it's reused CO2. And secondly, it gives more power. So it's very, very... Uh, nice to have in a car like this that you can be environmentally conscious at the same time have more performance it kind of goes hand in hand at the next station the Agera takes shape station six another groundbreaking invention and a further design challenge for the Koenigsegg team are the car's unique lights this is a uh, almost finished uh, new front lamp assembly of the Agira. What I tried to do designing this was to um, design it without any of the superfluous plastics uh, coverings and reflectors that a lot of lamps have today. Like the rest of the Agira, they're made from carbon fiber, but this time in the factory's own carbon workshop. Philip Jepson hand makes dozens of the Agira's components. It's a house for the headlight. I put the first layer on it, and uh, this layer you're gonna see. So it must be exactly on the mold. After two more layers, the mold is prepared for baking. This material soaks up the excess resin released during the process. It's then sealed in a vacuum bag and put in the oven. Fourteen hours later, this soft material becomes one of the strongest materials on Earth. Philip also makes the rear lamps, the result of yet another unique design. These lamps don't just look good, they help keep the engine cool. We designed these uh, to be multifunctional, actually having a, a grill effect and hollow centre, so it actually uh, lets airflow uh, and venting from the engine bay. Burn in the oven. While Philip loads up his oven, at station six, PM gets to finish what he started. 
Only one piece left to put on this car. The bonnet. As soon as he's tightened the screws, PM will find out if his earlier work on Station 2 has paid off. Success. But the job's not over yet. Now every crease, line, opening and attachment is perfected. First of all, we are putting all the panels on, on the car, so the body works. Looks nice and tidy, and uh, all the lines can uh, do all the adjustments to the car and to the bodies. Hours, even days, are spent finessing the smallest detail. The top of the car has to be really smooth uh, from the front hood to the door and to the back hood as well. It has to look equal. I don't want to have any changes, different angles and such. It has to be smooth and nice. And we have a small line going through the front hood and the door and the back as well on the side. As we look even, I don't want it to change from direction from panel to panel. It has to go through all panels. This team treats every single car as if it were their own. They even wear gloves. We have some kind of moisture on our hands. We don't want to filthy down the car as less as possible. So. That's why we have to use gloves as often as we can. Every time a panel or glass is touched, it's cleaned. And this pristine physique hides a powerful secret. The Aguera's precise aerodynamic design and monster engine provides enough power to drive this hypercar to a staggering 440 kilometers per hour. But Christian can't yet prove it. The test track he needs to take the car to its limits is owned by a competitor, and they're not likely to open their doors to another defeat by Christian von Koenigsegg. Although this mega top speed is possible, for safety reasons, Christian insists that every car is locked at 375. It will only be unlocked if stringent conditions are met, including tire tread and road conditions. At station six, the teams close in on the finishing line. It's time to add the doors. Another concept that many said was impossible. Like all Koenigseggs, the Aguera proudly displays the trademark door. These carbon fiber doors open in a single motion, moving outwards and upwards at a 90 degree angle. Supported by groundbreaking dihedral hinges, which use two parallel arms that rotate on a geared pivot, causing the doors to move in an outward arc. Technological genius, conceived to resolve the simplest of problems these uh, very special doors that open up in a very unique way that actually is a practical feature because the car is very wide and the doors themselves are very wide so if we would open them normally the car would be extremely wide in a parking spot so you have to park very far away from another car now you can park very close because the door doesn't take more space than its own thickness you don't have to make space to get out of the car because the door moves away from the car in front of the whole door opening Practicality is built under the bonnet as well. This is a hypercar with an unusual added extra, a luggage compartment. We have a very large luggage space for, for this type of car. It's over 130 litres, so you can actually get a weekend package for two, no problem. Uh, that's very unusual. And in case you're worried about the weather, it can also hold the Aguera's removable hardtop. One of the last jobs is installing the Aguera's perfectly designed interior. The interior pieces is quite tricky to, to line up the stitching and all that. Because every single piece is 
mask lining together for all the stitching line. The interior is called the cockpit, and it's easy to see why. This car is closer in performance to an aircraft than an on-road vehicle. It even has a G-sensor. Take the Agera to top speeds, and it's capable of delivering 1.6 on the G-force scale. Finally, the Agera reaches Station 7 for quality control and sign-off. A job that Christian takes very personally. There is, after all, a little bit of his heart and soul in every vehicle. It takes around 18 weeks for the Agera to turn from a carbon composite frame to this, the ultimate supercar. Christian von Koenigsegg is a man with many rivals, but he has only one enemy, compromise. To sell his cars worldwide, he must face this demon head on. One of Christian's biggest challenges is something called homologation. Everything we do is regulated, so it kind of becomes a natural framework that you, you don't think so much about what would happen if it wasn't there. It's kind of, what, how do I make the most out of it? And I rarely allow myself to compromise. Every country in the world has its own vehicle safety and technical regulations. To sell globally, a car must obey each of these rules. Once it does, it's referred to as homologated. To prove it has these credentials, the Agera has to be destroyed. I was forced to use uh, one car for the whole crust test program, where a normal company of low volume would use minimum 26 cars, because um, each test destroys a car. Rear impact of 80 kilometers per hour. Side impacts at 54 kilometers per hour. And a head-on collision. These are just a few of the tortures endured by the Agera. And incredibly, it survived every one. There is no doubt that Koenigsegg's customers are enticed by the raw power of this machine. But pushing this beast to its limits on the open road might leave the driver paying a hefty fine. So if the need for speed becomes overpowering, Koenigsegg has a solution. Come and use their own personal runway as a racetrack. We have um, started a yearly event where we invite our customers to, to, uh, to a Koenigsegg meeting where, we, uh, where they can bring their cars if they want to. And in keeping with its legendary status, cars are delivered to and from the Koenigsegg factory in unrivaled style. Only the lucky few can afford the Agera's hefty price tag. But one day, we may all find ourselves driving in cars with Christian's technology. It would be nice to have a broader audience enjoy the technology we're creating, but we try to spin off the technologies from what we're doing here, or let other bigger car companies use our technology for the benefit of making the car lighter, stronger, safer, handle better, uh, generally smarter solutions that we have had to use to make our car what it is. In an industry usually reserved for the giants with decades of sports car heritage, Christian von Koenigsegg is living proof that with determination and raw passion, anything is possible. Just approaching the car, even today, fills me with excitement that I'm going to drive it. So it, it has that, that kind of aura about it that it excites you by just approaching it. By the time this supermodel leaves the factory, it's the ultimate driving machine, tuned to perfection and stunningly beautiful. It's almost a shame to drive it. <laughs>